Howdy y'all, Caleb here. We've got a battle report for you today. Played a game a couple days ago with Seraphon. And as you can kind of tell here, I took some uh, Codal's Claw. Coatl's Claw? Codal's Claw? How do, you, how, do you say, how do you pronounce that? I don't even know how to pronounce that. Um, I am doing a source focus list, and we're playing today against a Trogoth army. Globs Mega Mob. So we're going to face off against them. Let's take a look at the list real quick. Game type, and then get into the game. So my list for the Seraphim, I'm going to look at that. Um, I'm starting off with a couple of Carnosaurs as my leaders. So I've got a Source Scarvet on Carnosaur. He is my general with War Spear. That War Spear, I like that on him. It gets six attacks. you got a lot of attacks. Uh, no Rend here, but we're not looking for that. We're going to be looking for the Mortals. And we'll talk about that in a second. Command Trait, Dominant Predator. So when he spends a Command Point, which I'm going to be spending on a lot with him, on a 4-up, you get it back. So it's kind of like Aether Quartz Brooch, if you remember that, but better. So I'm going to try to spend as many command points through him to recycle them back. And, you know, our army creates quite a few command points. So hopefully I can keep that, that train rolling. The artifact is the Eviscerating Blade. That's one you have to take with uh, Kotal's Claw here. And it's actually pretty good on the Scarvet. I really like it because on a 6, which is already exploding on the Scarvet, on his War Spear, but also on a 6, you'll get two mortal wounds added to that. Uh, in addition to any other damage. So that's pretty cool. That all of a sudden makes that War Spear, which is kind of, I mean, it has a decent profile, but no rend and only one damage. Now you're spitting out two mortals and it's going to explode. You can also spend another command point from him to have it explode another one. So each dice, if you roll a six on his War Spear, you get two mortals and two extra hits. So uh, pretty awesome. I like that on him. It can really pump out some damage. I really like the Scar Veteran on Carnosaur with, those, with that load out there. I'm also taking a Source Old Blood on Carnosaur. He's going to be with my Source Warriors. I like his command trait, um, which is or his command ability, which is plus one to to hit rolls on the Source Warriors because the Source Warriors really need um, that plus one to hit. They'll get the native plus one to hit from Kotal's Claw when they charge, and then he can spend another one if they need to to get another plus one to their hits. Um, I guess I didn't go over Allegiance ability and stuff for Seraphim. Uh, if you're on this channel, you've probably watched a lot of Seraphim stuff, so <laughs> you probably know what Kotal's Claw does. But it's really the source-based allegiance. Um, has a couple things. Anytime a source unit charges, they get plus one to their hits, which is really nice, especially because a lot of those source units need that plus one to their hit. So that's kind of the main thing there is, is it's a source-based list. It also gets the stuff from Coalesced, so like minus one to damage, um, plus one to jaw attacks, um, that kind of stuff, so... Pretty good. Um, I'm also taking a Skink Star Priest with Hand of Glory. I'm going to be putting that on to my Knights, my Source Knights, uh, so they can get the Mortals. They have a lot of attacks coming out of Source Knights, and uh, especially with the Scarvet, buffs them up with the Command Point so that they explode. Hopefully they'll get even more that will turn into Mortals on the Wounds. Skink Star Priest, he has a, he has a staff that gives a 6-up. On the wound roll is a mortal for that unit. So you can pump out quite a few mortals that way. Hand of Glory is basically reroll ones to hits. It really helps kind of save you a command point. Lord Croak taking him with uh, Stellar Tempest. I like that spell for dealing with hordes, which we won't have too many this time, so you can ch you end up changing that usually. Uh, Lord Croak and Source Astral Bear. So I'm going to be rolling the the Croak, <laughs> you know, the Croak loadout, which is which is nice. Uh, my battle line, I am taking six, uh, ten Source Knights with Lances, another unit of five. The ten is going to be my, my damage dealers. They're going to be going with the Source uh, Scar Vet on Carnosaur. The other five are just kind of objective grabbers, hold, hold objectives, that kind of stuff. Um, and then a blob of 40 Source Warriors, and that's going to be with my Old Blood, and three units of Source Guard. Might be overkill. Uh, I like to protect Croak, though he'll stand up to just about anything if he's got these uh, 30 wounds to pass off. And then my endless spell, I'm taking Balin Vortex. That's the only one I had room for. I could have taken something a little bit more. I could have, you know, I probably could have taken a bound uh, Purple Sun. I had an extra 20 points left in the list, but I wanted that Croak Power Tower there with the Balin Vortex. So I should be able to have, you know, kind of three distinct blobs. I've got my Knights and the Scarvet. I've got my Old Blood and the Warriors. And then I've got Croak and his, his group kind of holding down the middle. Guy I'm playing against, we got uh, Gloom Spike Gits in the Glogs Mega Mob. This is that new battalion from White Dwarf, and so he's gonna have a lot of of Trogs, Trogoths, 
So it's going to be a fun one. Uh, we've got his dank hold Trogboss as the general. Command trait is Shepherd of the Idiotic Destruction. And that on a four up in his turn, he gets an extra command point. So a little bit of a way to generate some extra command points for his army as well. Artifact, Aether Quartz Studded Hide. It's just a five up ward save. Um, his, uh, he has another dank hold Trogboth as his leader with Glowy Howitz. That's a four up ward save. On a one, he eats it. <laughs> so that's always kind of fun. Uh, especially when you roll that one on the first time. Um, also got two Fungo and Cave Shamans. Both of them took Hand of Gork. Uh, these Cave Shamans are pretty nice. They, they can cast two spells. They usually only cast one. Um, once per turn, or once per game, you can have them cast an extra spell if they need it. Uh, they both took Hand of Gork just to kind of double dip and make sure if I kill off one of them, he still has a way to teleport. That's what Hand of Gork is. These guys can also generate extra command points for his army as well. His battle line, he took a giant unit of nine Rock Guts. Uh, these guys are pretty nasty. They do have three damage, which is normally disgusting. So in Coalesce, it'll go down to two. It's pretty, I mean, it's it's nice to be able to reduce that. That's a, you know, I'm instantly reducing his army's potential damage by 30%. Everything in his army is going to hit 30% uh, less uh, hard. So I, that's that's pretty nice up against this army. Uh, a unit of six, six, and three Rock Guts, and those all go into his battalion which is stompy mega mom which this allows him to retreat and still charge and shoot in the same turn so pretty some good uh, movement shenanigans stuff with his teleports and his retreat and charge and then a endless spell skeletide that comes in at 1990 for 128 wounds so there's the lists um should be a fun one there's a the army set up look at that golly isn't that just a thing of beauty? <laughs> Love Seraphim. Uh, we are playing Total Commitment. And this is going to be a game type that has no reserves. You can kind of see the, the picture up here in this corner here. We've got this two in each, each um, person's deployment zone. The ones in your own are worth one. The ones in the opponent's are worth three. And this is an interesting game type. There's no reserves. Neither one of us had anything that was going to be off the table anyway. So it didn't really matter. But this has a lot of room in the middle of the board that doesn't have anything in, in it. These objectives are backed up real far. And so you're going to have to get all the way across the board um, and put some pressure on one of those objectives and take one of them while holding your own. Um, I wouldn't try to grab all four, that's for sure. But you definitely need to put pressure on one of his and win it over at some point in the game and hold yours. So there's a lot of distance in between these. But deployment's pretty short. You're only, you're only 18 inches away from each other. So if you do have an alpha striking army... Um, this is a, a good map for that. Neither one of us do, so we won't have to worry about that. Uh, there's there's my army set up there in the corner getting ready for deployment. And the Trog army, still a, a painting in progress. Lots of Trogs, a couple of Fungoids, and some Dank Holds there in the back. Um, so here's deployment. And you can kind of see the lines there with these with these dice that are laid out. I did put my Saurus Knights and Scar Veteran over here. I'm going to try to send them up that way, uh, depending on, on the turn. He is only at four drops, so I'm assuming he's going to make me go first. Um, I've got my big blob of Saurus Warriors over here that are going to try to put pressure. He's got his big unit of nine here, six, six, and three. And then his um, he ended up putting his... His fungoid cave shaman's back pretty far out of the way, just so Croak couldn't hit him. Um, I've got Croak and the Astral Bearer there in the pyramid right here. Um, just a little hint. We didn't actually roll for the pyramid. I just took it on my side because we were having fun. <laughs> we didn't want to roll for that thing. So we waited till after, to, after we set up the table, and then I put down the pyramid like it should be. Um, I hope they fix that sometime. It's so stupid to roll for your terrain piece. Anyway, uh, I did stretch out my three units of guard here just to put some bodies on the objective and protect um, Croak as well. I don't really mind having Croak on the front line since he's since he's basically got 37 wounds um, in this setup. So I don't mind if he gets alpha, alpha charged right off the bat. Usually I can re retaliate and hit with a bunch of spells and take them off the board so 
that's that's kind of what um, the deployment looks like. So he does let me go first. How generous of him. <laughs> There's a shot of the army. Um, so I didn't really I didn't really try to make too much of a of a of a play turn one because we're 18 inches apart and these these knights only move eight inches. I would have had to make a 10 inch charge. So I really only moved up about an inch or two. Uh, long enough to where he's gonna have to make a 10 or 11 inch charge on these guys turn one so I, i'm confident that he's not gonna be able to do that kind of the same over here it's even further for these guys um, i stayed back just waiting to play because this is going to be a long game these uh, these objectives are far apart um, but i know i can start putting out damage with croak he's kind of behind he's kind of protected by this building they've got to come around this way to get him and i can counter if if needed but his 22 inch range it's hitting it's hitting all the way over here when he's on that bail wind <laughs> um, so he's able to hit quite a bit of stuff unfortunately these these trolls are fairly tough they have a they have a five up after save and when you're only doing d3 mortals it's you tend to not do a lot of damage and especially these guys have four four wounds each i think with all of croak's stuff i only managed to kill off that one troll um, I put a couple wounds on another one over here and maybe one wound over here, but not nearly as much as I was hoping. I did roll a couple ones on his his um, big spell or his spammable spell. You have to roll a, a two up to see if it'll do any any mortals. And I ended up rolling quite a few ones, so that was that was a little disappointing. Um, but not as much damage as I was hoping. But I've got board presence there. I'll be able to do that every turn. So hopefully over the length of the game, I can do enough damage. I didn't even bother putting it into these guys, the Dankholds, because they've got a four up after save against magic. That They'll just completely ignore it. And his little fungoid cave shamans, I think one was there, one was back over here somewhere, uh, were just out of range. So I wasn't going to be able to hit those guys. I did try to send the board-wide comets on those little guys, and I think they may have shrugged one of them off. I think I did a little bit of damage to one of them. So that was basically turn one. I got buffs up on the knights. Um, didn't need, didn't have any buffs to put on these guys right now. Storing up a few command points. Um, overall, this game, Crow kind of was letting me down with his command point rolls. I think I, I, I only generated one extra command point every turn with Croak, but the scarvet was doing pretty good every time i was spending command points with him i was saving quite or i was regenerating quite a few of those command points so i kind of like that on that one but croak wasn't 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 giving me a pool of command points to work with like he normally does uh so at the end of uh, my turn in turn one i scored two points i had three command points uh sitting there and i kind of forgot that he has teleport <laughs> Uh, I also kind of thought, you know, I'm at this point I'm plus um, two to unbind because of the Astroleth Bear and Croak's innate ability. So I was thinking I could stop his his teleport, which casts on an eight, so it's kind of hard to teleport anyway. Um, I wasn't able to stop his teleport pretty much all game, but I was able to keep his Scuttle Tide off the board all game, and so that was I, I Scuttle Tide's a nasty nasty endless spell. It will. It will block you and mess you up. It won't do a ton of damage, but it'll block your block your paths. But he did get the teleport off. He brought in those nine um, rock guts behind me, and that's not fun to look at that. But he's got no hero, so he's got to make a nine-inch charge on those guys. He pushes forward, and he's you know he's got to make that ten-inch charge here. Kind of pushes forward a little bit, also being a little cagey with these guys. Um, and teleports these these guys back here. He threw a couple of rocks, got got that that knight killed there. Unfortunately, <laughs> he makes the charge. He makes that charge, the ten inch charge from this guy, all the way into my knights, and so that's not going to be good. Um, he does make that charge here, gets quite a few of them in, just barely makes it. So luckily, we didn't get all these guys all the way in, but they'll they'll be able to pile in. So they're gonna that's gonna hurt. And he makes that nine inch charge back there. So <laughs> I don't know what the statistical odds of that happening, you know, uh, ca casting Hand of Gork against Croak and then making both of those long charges, but he did it. <laughs> so we're in a bad situation here. We've got a lot of trolls off on either side of us 
and they are coming in. So this is after combat. The trolls right here, they obliterated those knights. I was left with two knights, so they killed eight. I had to use a command point to keep them from running. Um, but the Carnosaur was within three inches, and so I was able to pile in that Carnosaur, spend a couple of command points, and just rocked them. Just rocked those trolls. Um, they, I, I killed all those trolls there for, what is that, five? I killed five of those trolls. That's 20 damage I made it through um, on those guys. And so that was pretty awesome. I was, I was quite happy with that. He was left with one troll here, and he runs in Battleshock. So um, I'll, I'll trade that off, you know, trading the, the, the knights for those trolls. But the knights were going to be a lot of my offensive kick there on the next turn. And so that, if I had just stayed back one more inch, maybe that wouldn't have happened. <laughs> um, at the end of his turn, he, he does, I, I guess I didn't show how many killed uh, of the back behind my base. He didn't kill all that many guard, like three maybe, and they didn't do anything in return. Um, he put some wounds on the Astroleth Bear, but overall it, what they didn't hit nearly as hard as those other trolls did. At the end of his turn, he can regenerate trolls from the Loon Shrine. And so he does. He gets three of those six that I just killed with the, the Carnosaur. He gets them back, and within 12 of this, is able to kind of pile them back in the middle of the map, like right in here, back um, to where they're going to be a hassle again. So even though I killed all six, three of them come back. That's always fun. You can see this is the end of the turn. We've got a couple gu guards still here, and his trolls are coming in. If he gets the turn... On this one, he'll definitely score my objective here. Um, so I could be in trouble. If I get the turn, hopefully I can take those guys out with Croak's spammable spell. Unfortunately, before he sent them off, he spent a command point on them to give them a four up against magic, a four up save against magic. So they are going to be a tough one to remove. You can see his lines are being drawn here. Although his dank boss is a little, little um, exposed since, since his trolls were killed off. So now it's two to two, tied up at the end of one. And it's a tie roll off. So tie goes to me since I went first in the first turn. So I definitely take it because I need to I need to protect my back line here. And you can see my movement here. In hero phase, I really did not kill off many trolls here. I don't even think I put Croak into them. I tried to put a little bit more damage out here, but it just it just wasn't happening for Croak in this game. He wasn't doing as much damage as I was hoping. Um doing a little plink damage here. I think it took off like two wounds on that top unit. Um, just just wasn't doing as much damage as I'd hoped for. And I, did, I don't think I really targeted these guys because they had a four up save versus magic and then a five up ward save. So I was just going to bring my Carnosaur down here, hopefully kill off enough that I could battle shock the rest. Because uh, I do have terrible bravery and I have some debuffs from my um, Carnosaur and banner. So... Um, I brought these knights up here just to kind of block his trolls from coming in. They're not going to do a lot of damage anymore. Now they can just be a screen to stop them from coming in. Uh, these warriors made a terrible charge up here. Um, so I wasn't able to get as many into those uh, trolls as, as I wanted to. I knew I was going to have to take the hit up here on these warriors because I needed to attack this Carnosaur first. But I had to lock them in their zone because I didn't want them getting free towards my Carnosaur over here. So I locked them up with these warriors. They're probably gonna lose quite a few of them. And that's what happened. So I attack over here with the Carnosaur first. This, this is a Scar Vet. So I do pump them up with some command points. Uh, here's my warriors going into those trolls. And he does, whoo, whoo, look at that. That's how much damage. That's how much damage he got through. So he did uh, 26 damage through they're five up, five ups. Um, just absolutely disgusting. That's that's beautiful when that happens. Because you can spend a command point. I think I spent a command point on his uh, six up explodes. Um, and he got a command point back. And I spent another one on reroll hit rolls of one, I think. And he had the mortal stick from the star priest on him. So he was doing mortals on wounds. Um, so it was it was pretty nasty. It was pretty nasty. That was nice. So, bye-bye. <laughs> Those nine trolls are, are dead now. 
Um, so that was that was that was a thing of beauty to watch that happen. Over here, my warriors didn't fare quite as well. Uh, we did lose. I think it was I think it was about twelve warriors and took out two trolls. One of them was already already pretty hurt. Um, these are the warriors with clubs. Unfortunately, that's just what I have. And so if I'd had spears, probably could have gotten a few more attacks in, but at least the clubs have rend. And so that, that moves their saves to a six up, five up on the troll. So, uh, you know, jury's still out. I think I did a video on, on swords versus, or clubs versus spears, and it's about the same. Um, so they're just there to kind of, to kind of tie them up. I did have to use a command point on battle shock there to keep them from running. But we're grinding down the the trolls, but they're serving their purpose of just clogging it up, keeping them keeping them locked up. So there's the end of that turn. Still just have my objectives at this point. Just had to had to get rid of some of the stuff and score two points. So now it's four to two, and his turn in turn two, he gets another teleport. Yay! <laughs> so he gets a teleport on these trolls, looking to bring them into into those knights. And throws a rock, takes out one of those knights, and he's got to he's got to make a nine-inch charge on these guys. I don't think he does this turn. Um, these guys, oh yeah, I didn't move my skink priest up to just kind of kind of block. He wasn't going to be much use anymore, and so I just wanted him to to force them to have to kill him first. If they didn't, then I would run him over this way, try to take that objective from him where he has that fungoid cave shaman. But he decides to engage that. Star Priest with those trolls. And he brings in his Dank Boss to clear out those two knights that were my screen. So his Dank Boss is just squashes those guys, just reaches over and <laughs> squashes that knight. We lose quite a few more warriors here, but we traded them for another two trolls. So they're serving their purpose, but they are getting hit now by the trolls and the Dank Boss. And we're gonna we're gonna start losing them here. I don't think I had any more command points. I had used them all up on my last turn and battle shock, and so we're gonna lose quite a few warriors here in this phase. There's the end of his turn. Yeah, you can see I've only I've only got two warriors left after battle shock, but he's only got one troll and and the dank boss over there. So I, I traded that unit for five trolls. <sighs> I I guess it's worth it. Um, as long as those guys, are, you know, keeping him back in his objective area, that's that's probably worth something. He does clear out this, so now he's got a free shot coming in here, and he's freed up some area coming in here. So that's the end of his turn. Also scores two points, and he brings back. <laughs> Remember those nine I killed? So he rolls the four up to bring back half the unit rounding up. So he brings up, he brings back five. So. Ah, man. That's disheartening when that many trolls come back. <laughs> uh, when, when you kill nine and, it only, and then five come back. Here's a priority roll. He wins priority. So I know he's going to score some objectives this turn. Um, I don't think he had any... I, I think he failed his teleport this turn, maybe. Uh, so finally I stopped it. But he had these guys in. They're moving into the objective and then they're, they're going to make a charge on these guys. Clear this this uh, objective out, and he'll score these points. He, these two <laughs> warriors are actually kind of heroes right here. He had to retreat this guy to get out of combat just to try to make a push over here because he, he he knows he needs models. And then these guys that he had spawned in on his last turn get stuck moving up because they have to stay outside of three of these guys. So he doesn't have a lot of options. This dank boss needs to clear them out. Um, so those two little warriors are holding strong, keeping the tide of, of trolls from advancing too far. He is bringing in these three trolls. Doesn't have a real good target. I think he probably wanted to come into here. This is not his wounds, by the way. That's some buffs. I'm just marking his buffs. He probably wanted to come in here and try to put some damage on the Carnosaur, but his charge only allowed him to hit these, hit these guard, and he'll just end up killing off some guard with that. So these trolls over on my right uh, forward objective, this one here, he made these trolls in to those source knights and is able to wipe them out. So he, now he's got that objective. He made a really long charge on that one. So he, he got that objective from me. 
These trolls over here just, I mean, they swung and they missed. They caused one damage to the Saurus Guard. Just a huge whiff. And the Saurus Guard hit back and they cleared off. I think he, I think this guy had two wounds left, maybe. Cleared off the wounds on that one and just killed one guy. Uh, the great thing is, though, so the trolls are already have terrible bravery. They have five bravery. And his dank boss, I don't think, was close enough by. And so he lost one. And they're minus one from the banner. So they they he may have lost the other another win in combat or maybe or in battle shock maybe two I can't quite remember. So that's the end of that turn there. He's able to score my my objective. So he's got five. Uh, he's got nine total. He got five that turn. And now we're going into my turn in turn three. So I bring that carnosaur that was there in the middle here, and he's coming over to just to take out these guys. I could have pushed him forward, but I've got to deal with these trolls to get my objective back. Otherwise, he'll just he'll just score points on that. So I'm sending the old blood to deal with those guys. And this Carnosaur here. So there's a rule on the Carnosaurs. Once he's killed a model, he can run and charge the rest of the game. And that's pretty vital because he was, I mean, he was back here. So I, I think I may have had to use a command point to, to clear him up as far as possible. And he's going to make a charge onto that dang boss. And try to kill off that dang boss. And that should clear me the path to go kill the fungoid that's over here in the corner. And score his objective later in the game. Uh, these, I'm just going to keep them bogged up. Unfortunately, I can only hit with one rank deep of the guard. They really need <laughs> they really need a two-inch range since they got these giant halberds. But they only have one-inch range. So they can only fight one inch, uh, one, one rank deep. But they'll clear off those those uh, those trolls there. Um, Croak also, you know, just against this army, his his spammable spell just doesn't do a whole lot since they have that ward save. They're able to save a lot of what he pumps out. Um, here's the <laughs> the Carnosaur made a good charge, piled in around that side of the dang boss, get him closer, and caused 24 damage against the dang boss. I think the dang boss even got to attack first and just completely whiffed. Um, so it, it was pretty sad. Uh, it's only got four attacks, threes and threes. He can reroll the ones on the hits because of his command point, but I don't think he had enough command points to do that. And so he just may have gotten one through and uh, did one damage or something. Just a complete whiff. Because that dang boss can just wipe the Carnosaur off the table if he rolls well, but he didn't. And the Carnosaur came back and did 24 damage through to him. Only needed to do 12, and he was dead. I think he saved a couple with the Glowy Howitz, and then rolled a 1, and was gone. So we cleared off that side. Um, we cleared off all but one troll. And he needed to roll a um, 6 to save that guy, and did. And so... Battleshock kept that troll there, so I did not score my own objective back. Um, this Carnosaur also took six damage from those trolls, so he he's he's limping. He's he's down about half damage, and uh, took took uh, some wounds there. But just the fact that 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 troll that that troll survived. I killed two. He was minus one to his bravery from the Carnosaur also, so it was it was it was bad. But there's the end of the turn. I don't think I talked about it. I moved my Ashworth Bear. He only had one wound left after being attacked by the trolls that were back here. I moved him up here just outside of three of this guy just to create a block in case he was going to try to move these guys in this way. Um, just so he's forced to move around him or kill him somehow. Um, just a sacrificial Ashworth Bear there. <laughs> uh, so that's how the board looks. And I do not score any extra objectives. I only score one point that turn so I'm falling behind I'm down by four points but I'm liking my chances I've still got my two carnosaurs up his guys are still kind of pinned back in his area roll off into turn what was this turn four and I win yes this one is gonna be good so this guy flies this carnosaur flies all the way over to his objective here on that uh, left side corner and there's just a fungoid cave shaman there so He's going to go snack on that, that little fella. Over here, I did the kind of dispel your Bailwind Vortex, move it, hop back up on it trick, just to move him out of the way. 
moved a couple guard up to just block this path if they decide to come through and try to get to my objective at least they got to spend a turn there and it's already turn four so hopefully we can keep him out of my objective and do the same thing here where i just screen out in case he does nine inches here at least i can't get him the objective on that that turn so uh that's how those guys look my carnosaur up here he's got to stay there because he's got to take out that troll and deal with that um, i'm able to take out that one singular troll that was right here and i moved the banner up just kind of do the same thing screen these guys here they're not really gonna be able to move much in their turn and so i'm just trying to pin them back keep keep these guys back as far as possible so that's the plan my turn i, I activate here first kill off that troll and then over on this left side i probably don't have a picture of it kill off the fungoid cave shaman as well and that was the end of that turn score um both my objectives back and one of his so now I've got five. I guess I didn't show a scoreboard there. Um, on his turn, he's bringing in these guys, and he's he doesn't have much choice here because of that that guy there. He doesn't have an, ab an ability in the hero phase to kill it, and uh, so he's got to run like single file this way f through a little three inch corridor, and is forced to run. So he's not gonna be able to charge um, this turn. And he's setting up for his next turn. And if he can get the priority into turn five, maybe he can get into that Carnosaur, kill a Carnosaur, and score that objective. Over here, he does teleport his Dank Boss over here. If he can make that charge and roll well, maybe he can score that objective back. Fortunately, he does not... Well, fortunately for me, he doesn't make that charge. So going into the bottom of four, he only scored one point, which was his home objective... Uh, that top one that was the only one he scored so now we're tied up <laughs> tie game going into round five and so it's coming down to the roll off if whoever wins it probably has a decent chance at winning the game because um, he'll probably kill off both my carnosaurs if he rolls well with the dank boss definitely the one that's near the troll so he'll definitely score my objective um, may not score his, his own and so it <laughs> I think I still have the advantage, but we'd see. Um, roll off, I do win. Yes! <laughs> uh, so that's how the board ends. At that point, I'm just going to sit pat, score that that one and this one, and I'll score another five points, and I should win the game. Um, probably what I would have done is, is sent that guy over there to attack him, sent that Carnosaur here just to try to survive one troll, and... We should be good on the game. So, um, good game. You know, it came down to that final roll off. Um, it's good stuff. The trolls were tough. You know, they have a lot of. You don't think these big slow trolls are gonna be moving all around the board as much as they did? But he made three of his five teleports. He tried. Well, he didn't try one in, in turn five, but he made three of his four teleports against Croak. That's that's pretty good. Um, he never did get out Scubble Tide, so I kept that off. But um, it was a good game. It was a good game. Um, I, ne I didn't really get to use my Source Knights as much as I want, or at all, really. Um, I really wanted to be able to punch with those guys. Uh, I love the Source Source Knights. Source Warriors, you know, I guess they did a little bit of damage. They killed four trolls. That's about as much as you can ask from them. Um, but they did hold them down into their objective. You know, it's 40 wounds, and you're minus one to the damage coming into them. So try to get them into something that's an elite model and just try to tie them up. The hero of the game, for absolute sure, was a Scar Veteran on Carnosaur. Uh, he killed, man, I don't know how many. He killed nine trolls. Well, I guess it was about eight trolls, and then six trolls in the middle. So that's 14 trolls on his own, and I think he killed three more. Maybe he didn't, but he killed a dank boss as well. Uh, he definitely earned his points. That that loadout with with the scar veteran is awesome, especially when you can spend a couple command points and he gets them back on a four up. You're in business. The old blood over here didn't really kill as much, but he did kill off what he eventually needed to. He took him a little while to kill off those three trolls. That was a little disappointing. But he did hold that hold that one over there for me. 
Croak didn't quite do as much this this game as other ones. When you're up against armies that have a lot of ward saves, sometimes it can be harder to get all those spells through. He consistently casts his spells, um, but I did roll some ones on the on the spammable spell, so that kind of hurts. And then uh, he was spent. He was he was generally spending command points to make his stuff magically resistant. And so if he had a big unit, he would usually spend a command point to make it resistant. And so that was that was a good counter to Croak as well. So overall, great game. Getting to play some some trolls versus a Saurus list. Um, I think I could probably drop. Well, every time I say I want to drop a unit of guard because I think three units of guard is too much. They come in pretty vital. It's keeping Croak alive. And in, in this game, you know they they did help hold their line against some trolls. So. Uh, they, they did what they were supposed to do. Overall, I was pretty happy. Um, let me know what y'all would have done differently. What do you think about my list? I'll put my list below in the comments. Um, give, give, the, give the source list a thumbs up if you like it, or give the troll list a thumbs up if you like it. Let's see who wins. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we'll see y'all next time.